Uh, there are two phrases I learned my first week in the legislature were, that's amazing, and did he really say that? I don't think I, I fall in love with the job. I like what I do. I like making a difference. I like listening to people and so forth. But if they don't reelect me, my ego will be bruised for like two days. I have plenty of it left over in reserve. Uh, but there are lots of things to do in life. My problem is I'm worried about running out of years before I run out of things to do. I like reading in general, um, but generally I want to learn something from it. So I read some, I, I like historical fiction if I'm reading fiction, and I probably read four to one other stuff. I, I'm sort of a subscriber in womb to tomb learning. Okay. When you're not learning, you should be dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's some, there's so much, there, it is impossible today to be a renaissance man. Now, the only way that you do good legislation is that you do your homework and try to understand both sides of the argument. So I'll read stuff that um, uh, I'll find useful uh, next fall. I'll read at least two or three biographies a year. I did Truman last year. Um, Hamilton happens to be a favorite of mine. But the one thread you will find through the history of America is that we were always brutal to our politicians. I mean, they were so nasty to Washington. You know the guy who cut down the cherry tree and so forth that we all love as a father of the con our country. He almost didn't run for office the second term because they were just beating the living daylights out of him, calling him every name under the sun. He went, who needs this? So when I'm feeling particularly like put upon or life is unjust, as a lady said to me in church one day, a dear friend of mine, she said, it's broken. Our government is broken. Well, if it's broken, it's been broken since about 1700. And in a democratic society, you're going to have some folks who like to go off the reservation. If they can't win their argument, they make it an ad hominem. If I can't prove your idea is wrong, I'll just pick on you. A real leader isn't always telling you what's wrong. I mean, you can get pop people to follow you by being against things, but real leaders say, hey, you know, there's a way out. But when you go to the cemetery, you know the old cemeteries, how many tombstones do you see that are engraved with, he was against, he was against the Brooklyn Bridge, you know? I mean, being for things is how mankind has moved forward. But there's some folks I work together with that are Democrats, and we disagree on about this much. And we agree on about this much. And so we've sort of agreed that we're not going to argue about this because they're not going to change me, I'm not going to change them. But we've got all of this we can work on together to make our community better. And I, I, I think that's what I've seen in, in the leaders here. And the media focuses on on uh, stuff that wouldn't even make the papers in bigger cities. I mean, somebody, somebody gets, uh, there's a crime, and it's a headline. I, th I think the stuff you're doing is great stuff. And I see we have now Portage Life and, and some others coming along. And uh, I, think it's, uh, I think that once folks uh, get used to seeing something positive, it sort of changes their whole outlook. But if you surround yourself with folks that are perpetually, perpetually grumpy, well, possibly living under a bridge and scaring baby goats is where you ought to be.